So we are going to be talking to Agapi Stasinopoulos about her book, Speaking with Spirit, 52 Prayers to Guide, Inspire, and Uplift You. And who in the world does not need that right now? Um, okay, let's see here. There's Agapi. Let's bring coming soon. Hmm. Did it work? Oh, oh my God! Hello. Here you are. Here I am. Oh my God! This is so exciting. <laughs> we did it. Can we I did it. You? We Thank did it. You. you look gorgeous. <laughs> So do you. I think Look I'm good, you. right? Yeah, prayers. Yes, prayers to Turkey. Hi, I'm from India. Look at all these beautiful people joining us. I Hi. Know. I know. That's Turkey. Crazy prayers for Turkey, in Turkey, indeed. Prayers for Turkey. And we'll do that in a minute. And Greenwich, Connecticut. That's I love when people join from all over. Yeah, people. It's beautiful. And look, and you did just a, did a mind two hour, valley, uh, something? global. Something? Um, uh, webinar and um it was really you know these webinars are really about speaking to people without seeing anybody but they are all in the chat and everybody's asking questions and from all over they were from dubai from estonia malaysia india we had 620 people it was uh, 8 a.m <laughs> and i'm not a morning person wow <laughs> and i <laughs> and I said, wow, you did wake great. me up, in Scotland, hi, hi from Thailand. I love it, Kelly, I love it. I know someone said that there was a, an earthquake in Buffalo, New wow. York as well. Wow. It's wild. Well, that's why, that's why we need more um, light bearers, you know. Uh, we need more people to stand in the light. And that was my message today to that community. I said, you know, we have the opportunity, each one of us, to really amplify and stand in our light. And we need to really be ruthless with ourselves. We need to become spiritual warriors and not be worried about what we are, what we are not, what we get, what we don't get. Because, you know, to me, Kelly, it's really in the moment. It's every moment we are challenged. To, do we stay in the light? Do we choose the light or do we choose the lower vibration? And I, I have this analogy where I said, you know, there are, there are lower levels of consciousness, high from Palm Beach, how gorgeous must be there, and higher levels of consciousness. And I compare it to a mansion, like if you're in a mansion and you're in the basement, there is no light, but there are many floors to that mansion. So you have the opportunity to get in the elevator and press the second, the third floor, the fourth, and the more higher you come, the more perspective you have and then you can go into the rooftop and then you can see the whole city and you can see your whole consciousness so to me the challenge for all of us and you know i'm sure you you have had that question over and over again people say i want to find my purpose what is my purpose what is my calling and i said i think and i love to know what you think but i feel that our purpose each human being is to awaken to who we are to awaken to our soul, to awaken to our light. And then you do what you do. You can be an accountant, you can be an entrepreneur, you can be a fashion model, you can be a singer, a dancer, you can be a wonderful mom that raises your kids, you can be anything, you can go back to school. It doesn't matter what you do, but if you do it with a consciousness of the spirit, then it becomes substantial. Absolutely. And you say it's an opportunity right now. We need more light bearers. We are at a time in history and, you know, throughout time, thousands of years has always been dark times. And it's just this particularly very challenging time for a lot of people, for everybody, really, humanity. Um, and so uh, this is why I think your book was just so beautiful. Speaking with Spirit, 52 Prayers to Guide, Inspire, and Uplift You. It's it's tools to help uplift you to the, the roof, to get perspective. And like you said, it's funny with your accent, uh, you said we need to become warriors, but with your Greek accent, there's a little bit of, it, it made me think, in, warriors, you know, so many people exactly. are warriors, and we need, we need tools and 
um, practices. We need to be so committed, like you said, fiercely committed to tools and practices that make us warriors so that we can um, remain connected to our truth and not get thrown off course by all in the, the world, minutia that's in the, happening our in inner the world. world. And, and the outer world, right? Because every day, you know, today we get, uh, you know, this horrific, the, the shootings, and then there is the earthquakes, and then there is the whole political thing, and then there is, so if you're going to be uh, influenced by everything that's happening and coming your way, you're always going to be in the turbulent waters. So how do you get, I think you surf, don't you surf? Do you surf? I know, I saw you surf and I went, you I'm, you're so brave. <laughs> I don't even put my head out the water. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wait for very ideal conditions. Uh, but in life, you know, I'm not Laird Hamilton who will go out in any of the massive conditions. Uh, but, you know, he trains. He is, he is his mentally and physically prepared for the biggest wave. Um, and we need to be mentally and physically prepared for all the challenges that life is bringing us as the frequency is rising and the challenges get more and more intense. Relationships I see are being challenged every day. Um, and I think there's just a general sense of there's so much fear coming at us in the media that, that we feel just uprooted, like you said, and like a ship without a rudder on these waves and these rapids. And that's why I think prayer, while some people, you know, associate prayer with asking God for things, um, it's just, it's a practice where we get silent, close out the, 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 all the things that are hooking our attention and causing our anxiety and our stress and our fear and connecting back to our, um, just getting silence, connecting back to our higher self, which then connects us to, you know, exactly. the divine and our truth and our source. And the more we do that, the more we open that door every day, and your book is a beautiful tool to help us know how to open that door. Um, it's amazing how, many, how we become, like you said, we just go up in perspective and consciousness as we practice prayer and, and, and things like meditation every day. And then we see things from a different perspective. We aren't jostled so much um, on the ground floor. And we the synchronicities and the miracles that show up because we open that door every day and strengthen that connection to God or spirit and and Partly why I, I started every prayer. Like, for example, you talked about fear. And I love, you know, chapter 25, it says, bigger than your fear. You're bigger than your fear. And you know, Kelly, mm -hmm. that's what my mother used to say to us, me and Ariana, all the time. When we would be afraid of, you know, I was an actress, I was auditioning left and right and i would be so nervous and and uh, before auditions and or a date you know or going to an event i mean it could be a hundred things that you start to get these butterflies and my mother would say well, you're bigger than your fear so i wrote this whole chapter here and i i love this line here show me i ask every prayer i start i say dear beloved because i do feel we are the beloved you know like rumi and hafiz and kabir says and I think practicing looking in the mirror for yourself and seeing the beloved looking back at you. I mean, you are a Kelly and I'm an Agape and, you know, somebody's a Chloe and Carol, Karen. But that's your personality and your ego. But who you are in your essence is your beloved. And I, I try, I mean, I call myself darling too. But I just feel if you look at people, even in the supermarket, you're about to shop, you know, and the cashier is so pressured all these lines and and you look for a moment and practice in the moment to look at this person as the beloved your your life starts to to shift and so here i start by saying dear beloved show me how to transform my fear into trust and my insecurity into confidence show me how to transform my scared voice into my sacred voice and i find that the more we ask those questions and then sit in silence and, and just take, you know, the, it's, it's, a, it's literally a muscle to, to sit in silence and to, and, and, and your book, if you're new to prayer or, you know, if you, if you feel a little lost or don't know where to start, your book is so awesome because you, you tell us what prayer is, you give us your, but then there's like this um, index of different yes. prayers for different issues. Like you said, how bigger than your fear or, how to um, remove yourself from a toxic environment. I mean, things that, 
we need you've specifically channeled these prayers to help people with specific um, issues in their life. And it's just so wonderful. And my friend is recovering from an emergency surgery in the hospital. And I gave her this book because it's just so digestible. Um, and, and I think we just need, people get overwhelmed with exactly. starting any sort of new practice or, or they well, feel, feel foolish and they say, I'm not religious. You, so you feel, am who am I to talk to? to? Who am I talking to, people say? I mean, I feel self-conscious. And I always say, you know, turn into your 36 trillion cells that are making you and be humbled about it and turn into your breath because we really, even right now, Kelly, as you and I are talking, let's ask everybody to just receive the breath. Let's receive our breath. We don't really take our breath. I mean, if I said to all of us, stop breathing, we can't. I mean, we, we stop breathing when we die because our spirit contracts to move on. But it's a mystery. It's a, it's, 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 we really, the truth of the matter is we live in the unknown, but the more we anchor the spirit, the more the unknown becomes known. Absolutely. Yes, and, and talk a little bit about, um, you know, yes. being childlike. You, you, you just well, you spoke know, about this so much, before. So, I mean, you have your beautiful Riley, who is going to be four. And I mean, I look at her uh, at Instagram the other day, we ran into each other at the farm shop and she was eating her French fries and, and, and she was so happy, you know, chewing away. And the, just like you could just sit there and watch her eat and go, I'm in the moment, this girl is in the moment. So children, when people say, I don't know how to connect with spirit, I don't know how to connect with God. I say, you know, find a baby. I mean, here, Christina has a child who is five months old Alexander and he's just you look in his eyes staring at you and he's just beginning you know to open and close a book and you look at his um his little feet and you hold him and and you cannot but be present in your heart and it brings you right there and the uh, same thing the blessings of children and I whether you have children or not my friends spend time with children every week make a commitment find children find teenagers who are struggling, uh, who need mentors like, like us, and be there 100%. God is in our heart. It's, it's so simple, Kelly, that is incredible for all of us. To, no, it's not in the mosques, in the churches, in the synagogue. You might find it there, but you can be right now, right here, if you go into your heart and say, ah, who do I love? Let, let me bring that love in to me, let me share it with others and let me radiate it to others. You don't even have to say much. And anytime you get disturbed and the disturbance is usually in the solar plexus, we get anxious, we get sad, we get upset, we are grieving. Go from the heart and connect the chakras, the centers, and just say, I love you. I love you. I am loved. I am lovable. I am so lovable. And breathe it in. Just really open up Oh, you know, your heart, your heart chakra is, is radiates this electromagnetic field. You can literally walk into a room, not say a word, and flood the room with love. And it's so powerful when people say, I'm scared, I'm alone, I'm going to go alone. And uh, I say, go, I, I used to, when I lived in New York by myself, I used to go to so many things by myself. And I said, why not? I just go be a guppy. And I'll, talk, I'll go up and talk to anyone because people ultimately are all the same. We all have all the insecurities and the anxieties and worries and the future. We None of us know what the future is going to bring because there is no future. We're in the moment. And I mean, all the teachers talk about the moment. But to me, there is nothing more powerful than being in the moment. And again, um, you know, when you are singing, when you're dancing, when you're dancing, when you're playful, playful, when you hug someone, and it's everything right here and right now. And that's the discipline. I mean, I, 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 I wrote here in the preface, it takes discipline to turn your attention to prayer, to let go of your worrying. And it takes a sense of worthiness to believe that you are deserving of this awesome connection. And that's it. Like it's, it's, we really need to, to, in order to step into a room and, you know, open your heart and give love to everybody. We, we really need to have a deep exactly. connection to our source. We, and, and we, 
it's it's easy for us to see that we were all innocent beautiful little babies that started you know that came into this world you know no mistakes it's no late. errors we were just this innocent little creatures all humans all little holographic um images of of, of the divine right and and over time we learn things we build these prisons in our mind with the mistakes we've made and um, traumas that happen to us and everything. And, and we forget that we are all just these beautiful children of God. And, and so we really have to, as adults who are, can think consciously and change behaviors, and we need to have this discipline to every day strengthen that connection with the divine through prayer um, and, and, and sitting in prayer. And, and, and then we can it's just a rem it's a remembrance it's a reminder that we are divine that our soul is perfect whole healthy there's nothing flawed or wrong with it and only when we turn within and make that connection through prayer um meditation prayer and 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 you teach us how to do it with this beautiful book uh can we and, and remember you know, who we truly um, are it ha it happens in a moment i call it you know grace because in a way, um, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I describe very clearly in the book, in this book and my other books that I wrote before, Unbinding the Heart is one of my favorite books, is my life story. And I wrote how I, I became from this young girl who was an actress who wasn't getting what she wanted in the world at all. And the parts and the movies kept falling through. And I ended up having an epiphany in... Um, through the autobiography of a yogi, the book, which I love. And I was awakened like, oh my God, I'm not my body and I'm not my emotions. And I'm not this Greek girl wanting to be a successful actress. I am connected. And it was grace. I mean, I don't, it was 23. My mother had prepared the way. Um, but those moments of just epiphanies can happen, you know, right now in this Instagram, you can, um, I mean, I said to the, people were this morning on Mind Valley said, don't have another day like any other day. Have, a, have an amazing day today that you let spirit lead the way. You say, spirit, you do my day. Mm. You, you gave me life, you do my day. You tell me where to go from here to there and not bring my garbage with me, my baggage, my baggage, not my garbage, you know, not bring my heavy anxieties with me. And I, I mean, I'm sure like the other day, what happened to us, you know, tell them the story, how sweet that was. Yes, so, so you, bless your heart, you've been, you know, you reached out almost a year ago. When, think, a a year ago. ago, exactly. When did this book come out? A year ago, and it was right at the time where I was, I had realized that I was kind of hitting burnout and needed to take a step back and refill my cup. And so you, you were telling me, I'd love to do an Instagram Live or a podcast. And I said, oh, I'm really just pushing pause. I want to focus on my daughter. I love you so much. And I'm sure the book is going to be a wild success, but I just need to like, which was so honoring you, which was amazing, uh, amazing. And I was so <laughs> proud of you actually. And I said, good for her. You know, she's backing away from okay. the success of everything and people and saying, this is my priority. I'm giving this gift to myself. Yeah. Myself. So I could be a better mom to my daughter and, um, and then we checked in throughout the summer and, you know, we had a big move from a, from a, a house and just a lot of like stressful things. And then time of course flew through the vortex. And then we recently connected in the fall. And then finally the other morning, um, I, I, you just woke up this on week, my heart. And on Tuesday, you said like, Tuesday okay, or Wednesday. And I said, um, yes, perfect. Tuesday's perfect. And then I go. To yeah. And then. An hour later, I run into you at a restaurant. I've not I seen you in three you years. And, you know, it, it's so wild. So, I mean, A, thank God I texted you before I saw you because I'd be mortified. <laughs> if I didn't. But how miraculous is that? That like our energies, and that's what I find. Um, a friend of mine recently, you know, looked at my whirlwind trip to Europe and they're like, wow, you didn't really have a lot of downtime for silence. And, and it sparked this thing in me I'm like I don't have a lot of downtime for silence just in life in general let alone on a crazy whirlwind vacation but um I since that he said that thing to me I've oh. been sitting in the silence every day gone back to my transition and only then can synchronicities like what happened with us last week 
uh, exactly. happen in our awareness. It's just the more, the more you make that connection, the more you um, sit in silence, have the intention to connect to the divine and say, look, you make the sun and the stars and the planets and all of this crazy harmony in the universe. The trees, the flowers are growing without us having to think or do anything. Um, you know, the earth is shaking, you know, uh, again, we'll pray for Turkey at the end. Um, but, you know, so much is happening in nature. And Align, and, so and align. Spirit, and this divine without us doing anything. So if we can practice intentionality in our life and, and, and consciously connect to the divine, um, we can really just like, you just take you know, the wheel. Take the I love wheel. it. You just take the wheel. I've never heard of that before. I love it. Yes, and and it's a, it's it requires a sort of big letting go from the ego and the personality and losing control. But you know when uh, you know one of the things that I have in my poster uh, in every book and on my mirror is called God is my partner. And actually, I, I you know people say to me, what is the one thing? one offer is one affirmation um, that you would give people and say, this is the one. I say, this is the one. Every day I start my list. You know, I write, I write things down, other, not just on my iPhone, but I have lots of, you know, spiral notebooks and fabulous felt pens. And I start my whole list, uh, what I need to do today. But the first is like, God is my partner. And then I look at my list and I, I go, no, no. Do you know you ever make lists of people you need to connect with and then you look at it and you go, eh, no, eh, no, no. Yes. <laughs> and you go to that one. And then that you, you call that person. You just yeah. text them or you run to them in the farm shop or you, you meet them because you are aligned. And I always feel, you know, I, I gave this, you know, it's a story that I share in my book about when I was raising money for a project and my Greek partner was upset with me about some things and he said, and I said, I'm gonna do it alone. And she said, but I'm your partner. And I, he was the, the man who had all the money to put in the project. And I said, no, you're not my partner. God is my partner. And I never forget it. I kind of shook. And I want to um, share that with our, our listeners here that when you get into the spirit uh, and you speak your truth, you kind of shake. Spirit is powerful. It's not like, it's like the huge waves of the ocean. It's big. So when you get into the spirit, um, you have your power and it comes out that way. And you, when you speak your truth, so dare to come to that. And I, and I have a lot of prayers about how do you get into your confidence? How do you bypass your insecurities? Your insecurity comes from that place that is the personality and the ego and doubts yourself. But the spirit is like, it's like the tsunami of love, the tsunami of spirit. So sometimes for me, when I started to learn how to come to that, I, I would tremble a little, you know, and, and then you come and you affirm it and, and it has a calmness because I love that uh, my, cal my calm is my superpower. And, and in this book, Wake Up to the Joy of You, I wrote for a 52 meditations. And if you send me an email at agapi at unbindingtheheart.com and, and Kelly, if you want my darling, you can put it on the comments so they know it. I will send you my meditations because often people have a hard time settling the mind. But I find that even now if we say, take a deep breath, exhale with a sound. Let the spirit come in. Let the light fill us right now. Protect us and surround us. Send the light to everyone you think of. Let's all of us build this incredible vortex of the cosmic light of the cosmos that sustains the Christ, the Buddha, the enlightened beings. Let them come and fill and send it to Turkey. And when you think of Turkey and when you look at the news don't internalize it send the light and you feel the light coming out of you from the source and then you fill yourself up and you send it to everything that you have to do today you send it to your families, your children your parents, your friends you send it to this Instagram live 
that you send it when you are taking your phones and you start to scroll down, send the light, send the light. Otherwise you internalize everybody's stuff. And then be disciplined with yourself to put the phones down, to put the computers down, to put everything down and to put yourself down and to actually um, say, I put this, I have this beautiful prayer called, let me put this day to rest. And it's chapter nine. I'll read you just a little bit because I really love, and we're all so obsessed about getting more things done and more things done. And I say, you know, sometimes you just need to put yourself down and you say, I allow myself to lie my body down, to take a deep, long, slow breath and exhale the day away. I did the best I could with all that was on my plate. There were no catastrophes, no earthquakes, nothing that shook the earth except what happened in my mind. So now I let my mind rest and unravel and discard what didn't go my way and give myself permission to soften my heart and take in the good. All is well. What's left undone will be done tomorrow. I declare it a good day, a day that emerged with all its ups and downs. Whatever is stuck, hurt or unfulfilled, let it be dissolved into the grace of the night. And in my dreams, show me, guide me and instruct me on everything I need solutions for and help me open the channels to receptivity so that I may receive my wisdom, my softness, my power to create the love I want for me and those I love. Show me in my dreams that I'm not alone, that I'm always guided. Let me put the day to rest and sleep in perfect harmony. Mm, I love that. Yeah, you're, you're helping us be intentional with our life and our connection. And when you set those intentions, whether it's sending light to Turkey, and some of you are asking what happened in Turkey, there was a massive earthquake and a lot of damage and casualties. So, but when we have that intention of sending light and love, I mean, they've measured this scientifically that when, especially when groups collectively send love or pray together or meditate together it literally changes the frequency and there's scientific measurable changes mm -hmm. at the destination or the person that people are paying attention to so again this is agape's new book a uh, beautiful book and it, it's called speaking with spirit 52 prayers to guide inspire and uplift anywhere you. that Where can books they find are sold of course help you know if you go to amazon right now you'll have it tomorrow keep it by your bedside and a lot of people say to me they just open it um, and, and open it at any page and say, Spirit, give me a message. It's very charged. I wrote it during the pandemic when I was going through a very hard time. And Spirit gave me those prayers. My editor said to me, I cannot edit those prayers. They are just rolling beautifully. The script, we edit. The preface, I worked so hard to bring it, to crystallize it, to make it as practical. So keep it by your bedside. Share it. I love to hear your comments. Send me an email at agapi at unbindingtheheart.com. I'll send you my meditations. And also uh, send me your, your um, prayers and say, you know, what you loved about this book and share it. And uh, go into my website, wakeuptothejoyofyou.com, and you'll see a lot of uh, Agapi's material there, podcasts and, um, and, and lots of talks and, uh, and just, Let's keep on growing and standing steady, steady and calm and rooted in a light. And I, I want yeah. to share this affirmation, which is moves us from scarcity to abundance. My, it's from a Sufi poet uh, called, my heart is at ease, knowing that that is mine, that 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 is mine will never miss me. And that that, that misses me was never meant for me. My heart is at ease, knowing that 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 is mine will never miss me. And that that misses me was never meant for me. So don't worry about what doesn't come your way. Let those things that are yours, don't waste your precious life chasing dreams and things. Don't chase. Let it come 
be intentional, as Kelly said. Write it down. Keep a book by your bedside that says, Spirit, speak to me. God is my partner. It doesn't have to be a fancy book. A pen and a spiral notebook. Every night, every day, just one word. My word right now is gratitude. Thank you to my wonderful friend, Kelly, who just gives so purely from her heart and created this amazing work. But to me, what she committed to be a mother to this gorgeous girl, and it's just, um, it's so special. And I'm so happy that we did this together and put this energy, and um, I can't wait to see you again, my darling. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, thank for you. joining. Go be your light. Go share your light today. Have a miraculous, magical, spirit-filled day. You will. Amen. And remember, God is God your partner. Who is your partner? God is your partner. <laughs> Okay, I love you. Oh, this is so nice, Jana. Thank you. Tears are so nice, so sweet. She's crying. Thank you, Jana. Don't forget to follow Agape Seas. is my Instagram. I post a lot of uplifting content always. Thank you, darling. Love you guys. Thank you.